It is day 297 of the Russia-Ukraine war, and Ukraine is still seeing major power outages across the country following Friday's large-scale missile attack by Russian forces. Many people there are without heat and running water. We have our correspondent, Jim Lechner, who is now on the ground in Kyiv. Jim, what is the latest from there? Well, good evening, Rita. That's correct. Here in Kyiv, as people are preparing for the holiday season, over the past 24 hours, we've experienced a series of significant cruise missile attacks by the, by the Russians with a reported 60 cruise missiles fired at Kyiv alone, in addition to the overall strike against uh, numerous cities here in Ukraine. Uh, as a matter of regular, regular practice, people are experiencing power outages for about three hours. The crew itself downtown and center uh, the city center of Kyiv had about an hour of power loss a day. There's a drop in water pressure and a number of other impacts on the infrastructure. Again, this is all part of Russia's strategic campaign, air campaign, to, campaign to pressure the Ukrainian infra infrastructure. Last summer, it was against the petroleum industry, trying to, to squeeze off gas. Now they've switched the electric and the heating aspects of the Ukrainian infrastructure, and it's, it's putting a strain. But one of the key things is that the Ukrainians here are just showing resolve. They're showing ways to innovate and get around this and, and go into the office and, and communally work together and get through this. While all this is going on at the strategic level, the Russians are continuing their offensive out in the eastern Donbass. Uh, in spite of what some people had falsely claimed, when the Ukrainians had their counteroffensive this fall, it, it did not break the Russian capability. And they are actually pressuring in the south and against the city of Bakhmud, which is under significant pressure now. We've talked to a number of units on the line there, and they're holding the Russians, but they're under immense pressure. They're outgunned. And I just want to echo your previous guest comments that they need the heavy weapon systems. They have the infantry to go into the trenches. They're there now. But they need the heavy weapon systems to fight back against the Russians. All right, Jim, back to keep you. us posted. Thank you very, very much. And our next guest recently returned from a visit to Ukraine and Poland to gain a firsthand understanding of the Russian invasion of Ukraine and what is needed to ensure global security. South Carolina Congressman and House Armed Services Committee member, there he is, my friend, yeah. Congressman Joe Wilson. Joe, what did you learn on the trip, Congressman? What was the biggest thing? Um, and I know that you were looking forward to going there and seeing it firsthand. Well, actually, uh, it reiterates what uh, Colonel Oliver North, an American hero, uh, and uh, Jim, who's on the uh, front lines today in Kyiv. I was in Kyiv a week ago today. Uh, it was a, a bipartisan uh, uh, congressional delegation. And the first thing I uh, certainly found out is the resolve of the people of Ukraine. Uh, they fully understand in the great tradition that uh, Rita Cosby understands, and that is, uh, don't tread on me. Additionally, they understand live free or die. And so it, it, uh, the resolve is so important. And, uh, and uh, indeed, uh, it was, uh, I, I'd been in Kyiv a year ago uh, in December. So I was able to compare uh, a year later. And, uh, and the difference is that they were planning uh, in the best tradition of uh, Polish resistance to have Ukrainian resistance. And uh, now it's far beyond resistance. Um, the resolve of the people of Ukraine and, uh, and the uh, improved policies of the Biden administration, they're not as good as they should be, but they're certainly better than they were. And that is to provide the people of Ukraine the air defenses, the uh, ability to defend themselves. Yeah, they're talking about giving, of course, the uh, patriots. Um, how big of a difference? That's a game changer, don't you think? Oh, it would be terrific. And uh, hey, uh, when we got to uh, Kyiv last Saturday, uh, the first person we met was Ambassador Bridget Brink, uh, the DCM, uh, Chris Davis, Chris Smith. Um, we have uh, great people there, and uh, I'm just confident that they are coordinating uh, Patriot missiles to be provided to protect the infrastructure. Uh, th this is a war crime, uh, what Putin is doing, and that is that uh, by attacking uh, the infrastructure of uh, Ukraine, uh, he's trying to repeat Joseph Stalin. Uh, Stalin uh, made every effort to starve the people of Ukraine to death. Uh, and now Putin is repeating uh, in the 21st century, and it's inconceivable, to freeze the people of Ukraine to death. Uh, but uh, the innovation, the innovativeness of the people of Ukraine with, uh, hey, who would ever imagine, uh, Rita, to have the support of the entire European Union, uh, to have a, a unified NATO 
uh, to add in our lifetime uh, Sweden, after 200 years of uh, neutrality, be part of NATO, to see um, Finland. Finland actually defeated the Soviet Union in the uh, Winter War of 1939, and to have now an 830-mile border with the Russian Federation. And uh, it, be it should become clearer and clearer, sadly, to the people of Russia uh, that they are being sacrificed uh, for the personal gain. And I'm glad that uh, you focused that it's Putin's war. It's Putin's war uh, and for his personal gain. And he's sacrificing young Russians and, and, uh, and then uh, using mercenaries uh, to uh, commit war crimes. Yeah, it's horrible what's happening over there. It's it's abominable. What you are also introducing a resolution, Congressman, to remove Russia from the United Nations Security Council. Take us through that because it is amazing uh, that they have a veto vote there. How can you do well, that, and is that realistic? I, we're we're going to make every effort, and it's going to be bipartisan. I'm really grateful that uh, the current co-chair of the Helsinki Commission, Congressman Steve Cohen of Tennessee. Uh, we uh, have introduced this together. Hey, with the new Congress coming in in two weeks, uh, we're going to somewhat reverse roles. Uh, I'm really looking forward. I'll be the chairman of the Helsinki Commission, and I, uh, the Organization of Security and Cooperation in Europe delegation from the United States, and we will be working uh, with OSCE, with the Helsinki Commission, with the European Union, uh, indeed, to uh, uh, the Russian Federation uh, has been hijacked, uh, my view, uh, by uh, a mafia. Uh, to uh, led by uh, Vladimir Putin, war criminal Putin, and they should be removed as uh, one of the permanent members of the Security Council. There, uh, they uh, as we proceed and things that are really incredible, uh, Rita. Who would ever imagine that we have a uh, a war now being conducted that uh, with the uh, cell phone uh, that uh, virtually every uh, atrocity can be recorded almost as they occur. Uh, the uh, personnel who are conducting, uh, who are committing the crimes, uh, the people of Ukraine have cell phone capability, and they are uh, recording this. And we will be able to identify units uh, for ultimately uh, war crimes uh, trials locally and internationally. Uh, and and so it, it's um, a remarkable time that we uh, really need to identify to the people of uh, the Russian Federation that their country uh, has become a pariah. Uh, so long as uh, Vladimir Putin is uh, the autocrat in charge. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it is astounding what's happening, and there definitely needs to be justice after what's been happening there. Bravo for you for going there, and congratulations on the promotion uh, that'll take place on January 3rd. It's great to talk with you again, Congressman. Well, Rita, you make such a difference. And hey, Newsmax, thank you. you uh, and uh, it's just so refreshing, and I, I just wish you well on everybody's success. And hey, uh, the, the people of Ukraine, uh, we, uh, their fight is uh, America's fight, uh, and they are fighting uh, on behalf of um, rule of law in the world. And so I, I'm so grateful for their, uh, I believe, success, ultimate success. Yeah, it's so Thank important. You. Hey, you, you know, hey, my father was a president? Polish resistance fighter, so I know that fight all too well. No, no, no. Hey, hey, and I can't wait to read the book, okay? <laughs> and so, uh, and, and having a Polish American daughter in law, I identify with you too. And so, uh, from Krakow. So, best wishes and uh, Merry Christmas, happiest of New Year's. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you, Congressman. Great Thank to you. connect with you. Thank you. No crooked, crooked establishment. None of that twisting, twisting the truth. No talking down Don't to me. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. I trust Newsmax. News Newsmax. They don't tell, tell me, me how to think. think. They let, let me decide. Newsmax. Real news. For real people.